Hello and welcome to Vision of Asia, the news you can trust in events that move and celebrate our very own South Asian community. I am Pia Jyoti Katru coming to you from our ITV Gold studio in New Jersey. In the headlines today, Prime Minister Modi says special Ayush visa for foreign nationals on annual. Supreme Court halts demolition drive in Delhi's violence hit Jahangir Puri orders status quo. West sends Ukraine fighter jets heavy weapons as fighting intensifies in Donbas. In the business news, Netflix tumbles as 200,000 users exit for first drop in decade. Priyanka Chopra, Sam Hugan's first look from It's All Coming Back is All Things Love. The annual New York Indian Film Festival Knife kicked off in the Big Apple yesterday. In New Jersey, Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce organizing workshop on sleep deprivation. Prime Minister Modi says special Ayush visa for foreign nationals on annual. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated Global Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit at Gandhinagar on Wednesday in the presence of WHO DG Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus and stated that India is going to introduce a special Ayush visa category for foreign nationals who want to come to the country to take advantage of traditional medicine. To address the growing demand of foreign nationals in traditional medicine, Prime Minister Modi said soon India is going to introduce a special Ayush visa category for foreign nationals who want to come to India to take advantage of Ayush therapy. In his address, Prime Minister Modi said that the possibilities of investment and innovation in the field of Ayush are limitless. We are already witnessing an unprecedented boom in the production of Ayush medicines, supplements and cosmetics, added the Prime Minister. We are going to make a special Ayush hallmark. This hallmark will be applied to the highest quality Ayush products made in India, added Prime Minister Modi. The Prime Minister said, it is very important that the farmers involved in growing medicinal plants should get the facility to easily connect with the market. For this, the government is also working on modernization and expansion of the Ayush e-marketplace, he informed. So far this year, 14 startups have joined the Unicorn Club. I'm confident that unicorns will soon emerge from among the Ayush ecosystem, said Prime Minister. Speaking about Ayush's contribution during the COVID pandemic, Prime Minister said, it's the first time an investment summit is being held for the Ayush sector. I thought of this at the time COVID-19 outbreak. During this time, Ayush Kara and other similar products have helped people boost their immunity. Besides the WHO DG, Mauritius Prime Minister Parvind Kumar Jugnath, Gujarat Chief Minister Bupendra Patel and Union Ayush Minister Sarbanda Sonawal were present at the ceremony. Director General of the World Health Organization Tedros Adhunam Ghebreyesus said that he feels privileged to come to the land of Mahatma Gandhi. Emphasizing the areas of development, Tedros said, long-term strategic investments and government commitment needed to support innovation innovators. The government needs to develop traditional medicine in a sustainable way. Bringing traditional medicine to market must make sure communities that gave this knowledge also benefits out of it, added Dr. Tedros. Mauritius Prime Minister Parvind Jagnath said that it is a matter of pride for him to participate in the Ayush Investment and Innovation Summit. According to WHO, 80% of the people in the world use traditional medicine. The knowledge of this medicine should not only be respected, but should also be protected and promoted, added Mauritius Prime Minister. Supreme Court halts demolition drive in Delhi's violence hit Jahangir Puri orders. Status quo. Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered to maintain a status quo on the demolition drive conducted by North Delhi Municipal Corporation in Jahangir Puri in the national capital. 
The court said it will hear tomorrow the petition challenging the special joint encroachment removal program in Jahangirpuri of the civic bodies, including the NDMC and the PWD. A bench headed by Chief Justice Envy Ramanna, hearing the submission of senior advocate Dushin Dave, ordered status quo in the president's situation and said the petition would be listed before an appropriate bench. The court's order came even as bulldozers started raising structures in the area as per orders of the BJP-controlled North Delhi Municipal Corporation and amid heavy police presence. The encroachment removal action program was scheduled to take place on Wednesday and Thursday after the area witnessed violence on April 16th during a religious procession. In the hearing of senior advocate, Dave mentioned that unconstitutional, unauthorized demolition was taking place in Jahangir Puri, where riots took place. Meanwhile, senior advocate Kapil Sibyl mentioned the plea filed by Jamaat Ulamae Hints, plea against employing bulldozers to raise houses of persons suspected to be involved in crimes. Jamaat e Ulama e Hind moved the Supreme Court against employing bulldozers to raise down the houses of persons suspected to be involved in criminal incidents such as violence. Jamaat e Ulama e Hind has urged the Supreme Court to issue appropriate direction to the center and state governments that no lasting precipitative action be taken against any accused in any criminal proceedings and issue directions that residential accommodation cannot be demolished as a punitive measure. In its petition, jamaat e ulama -e hind said that there has recently been an increase in the incidence of demolition of residential and commercial properties by government administration in several states as a punitive measure towards persons allegedly involved in criminal incidents such as riots. West sends Ukraine fighter jets heavy weapons as fighting intensifies in Donbass. Ukraine's outgunned and outmanned military has held out against Russia for almost two months. And as Russia intensifies its attack on Ukraine's east and south, Western governments are dispatching heavier weaponry and warplanes to support resistance efforts. President Joe Biden approved a new 800 million aid package last week that dramatically expanded the scope of weapons Washington has supplied to Kyiv. The package included 155 mm howitzers, a serious upgrade in long-range artillery to match Russian systems, 40,000 artillery rounds and 11 Soviet-designed Mi-17 helicopters. The latter fit well with Ukraine's existing arsenal because those use a similar operating system as the Mi-8 helicopters that Kyiv has used for decades, said Alexei Moraviv, a national security expert at Australia's Curtin University. Ukraine has also received fighter aircraft and related parts from other nations, Kirby said. He declined to specify what kind of aircraft has been supplied or which countries have provided them. At the start of a visit to the three Baltic states that are NATO members, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said Wednesday that Germany has delivered anti-tank weapons, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles and other things that we didn't talk about in public so that the deliveries could be carried out quickly and securely. Other Western nations have also moved to deliver more sophisticated weapons to Ukraine as the war evolves. Britain in April pledged a defense support package worth some $130 million that includes more anti-tank missiles, air defense systems and non-lethal equipment. Norway announced Wednesday that it would donate 100 Mistral air defense missiles on top of the light anti-armor weapons it promised late last month. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root said Tuesday that his government is sending heavier military equipment soon. Farther afield, the Australian government has started sending Bushmasters to Kyiv after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked lawmakers in Canberra for the armored vehicles last month. The 20 promised Bushmasters will protect Ukrainians from explosives, artillery, shrapnel and small arms fire, Canberra said. 
Ukraine will require arms delivery well into the future if it is to fight off Russia. In the business news, Netflix tumbles as 200,000 users exit for first drop in decade. Netflix fell as much as 26% during pre-market trading in New York on Wednesday after saying it had started losing customers for the first time in a decade. If the declines hold, the streaming leader will see about $40 billion in market value wiped out overnight, putting it on course to be the worst performing stock of the year on both the benchmark S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 indices. Netflix said it would introduce a cheaper advertising supported option for subscribers in the next couple of years and will start to crack down on people sharing their passwords even before that. Netflix also will curb its spending on films and TV shows in response to the customer losses. Co-founder Reed Hastings has said for years that he doesn't want to offer advertising and had no problems with password sharing. But the company is changing course after losing 200,000 customers in the first quarter, the first time it has shed subscribers since 2011. Netflix also projected it will shrink by another 2 million customers in the current second quarter, a huge setback for a company that regularly grew by 25 million subscribers or more a year. Investors, analysts and Hollywood executives had been bracing for the company to report a sluggish start to the year, but Wall Street still expected Netflix to add 2.5 million customers in the first quarter. The shares are already down more than 40% this year. Management pointed to four causes, including the prevalence of password sharing and growing competition. The company said there are more than 100 million households that use its service and don't pay for it on top of its 221.6 million subscribers. The Lost Gator, California-based company, is experimenting with ways to sign up those viewers, such as asking people who are sharing someone else's account to pay more. It allows us to bring in revenue for everyone who is viewing for gets value from entertainment we are offering. Chief Operating Officer Greg Peter said during an interview, Netflix troubles are a warning sign for its peers and competitors. After watching millions of customers abandoned pay TV for streaming, U.S. entertainment giant merged and restructured to compete with Netflix. Investors increased the strategic shift, boosting shares of companies like Walt Disney Company that demonstrated a commitment to streaming. Investors have begun to question whether some of these media companies will sign up enough customers to justify all the money they are spending on fresh programming. Disney fell as much as 5.2% in extended trading after Netflix reported its outlook, while Warner Brothers Discovery Inc., the owner of HBO Max, declined as much as 2.8%. Shares of Roku Inc., the maker of set-top boxes for streaming, dropped as much as 8.3%. Priyanka Chopra's first look for her international film It's All Coming Back has been unveiled and it will definitely make you embrace your loved ones. Taking to Twitter, Priyanka shared a glimpse of her first look with co-star Sam Hugan. In the image, Priyanka can be seen sharing a warm hug with Sam. Responding to Priyanka's tweet, Sam heaped praises on her. Pri is wonderful in this, he tweeted. Priyanka immediately replied to Sam, writing, Ah, oh, look who is talking, at Sam Hugan. I think this will be such a lovely Valentine's Day movie and the new Celine Dion music. Initially titled Text for You, the romantic film is based on the 2016 German film SMS for Ditch by Caroline Herforth. In the project, Priyanka will be seen playing the role of a woman struggling to move on from the death of her fiancé. To cope, she begins sending messages to his old phone number, which has been reassigned to a new man, played by Sam. The two meet and develop a connection based on their shared heartbreak. Celine Dion is also a part of It's All Coming Back to Me, which is scheduled to release in theaters on February 10, 2023.
The annual New York Indian Film Festival, Knife, kicked off in the Big Apple yesterday at the Consulate of India. The New York Indian Film Festival announced its showcase films for opening centerpiece and closing nights. The Knife's virtual film festival will be streamed via Shift 72 this year from May 7th through 14th, 2022, with the closing film screening and awards function taking place in person in New York. So let's take a look at the highlights from the festival. TV, uh, New York Indian Film Festival comes back to you in the New York City area from May 7th to 14th, going virtual on Shift72 online.knife.us, that's online.nyiff.us. Watch all the films, their festival packages for features, shots and documentaries. And come join us on closing night, which is May 14th at East Village Cinemas in New York City. We're coming to you with the documentary, The Beatles in India. It's got some rare footage, some never before seen photographs, um, commentary about the Beatles, that the, the time that they spent in India. So it's a fascinating must watch. We will have a red carpet screening, awards gala and after party. So come join us on May 14th and we'll see you May 7th to 13th online. Thank you. We are delighted. Tiga? We are delighted to partner with Indo-American Arts Council and to bring New York Indian Film Festival to our audience, to our friends, to our circle of well-wishers here in the New York and the United States. As in previous years, this year the film festival is again going to be very, very special. But what makes it unique this time is that it is being celebrated as part of India at 75, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. I'm sure the audience are going to have a wonderful time. Thank you. Namaskar. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of IAC, the Executive Committee, and hardworking volunteers of Indo-American Arts Council, I welcome all of you to this special occasion today. Today, we formally launch New York Indian Film Festival. Consulate has been a traditional venue f to do that, and we have done this many times in the past. The details of what Indo American Arts Council will, uh, will be given by executive director and the head of the curatorial team uh, soon. Uh, most of you are familiar with with this organization. It has been here for over 22 years. Uh, it's a major and, and a predominant uh, organization involved in presenting vast myriad of Indian art disciplines in America. Our focus has been New York Film Festival, which we do every year, Raising Borders Dance Festival, Music Festival, Art Festival, literary festival, book readings, and other, other things that come up during the year. This year is very special because it is the 75th anniversary of India's independence. And Consulate General, uh, Indian Consulate and Indo-American Arts Council are working closely together uh, to make it a successful celebration. Council General Mr. Randhir Jaswal is intimately involved 
with the Indo-American Arts Council leadership uh, to have a year-long celebration, which has never happened here during the 50th anniversary or 25th anniversary, uh, and, and uh, make it a grand occasion and a grand year. India is finally reclaiming its role in the world affairs after a break of about two, three hundred years. So it's a re real cause to celebrate the 75th anniversary. Despite COVID for the past two years, we were able to have greater success and bigger audience uh, for our programs. So we are, for that, we are thankful to, uh, for the support and the confidence that people have in us. Yeah, my name is uh, Meghna Damani, and uh, I'm really excited to be here at the New York Indian Film Festival because this festival is really close to my heart because my first film, uh, also a documentary, was screened here many years ago. And uh, this is one of the pioneering uh, festivals in New York, you know, for Indian uh, cinema. And um, I really uh, value all the work and effort that the team has put in through so many years. And so I'm very proud, grateful, and thankful and excited <laughs> to be part of uh, New York Indian Film Festival again. In New Jersey, Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce organizing workshop on sleep deprivation. Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce will be organizing a workshop to talk about a comprehensive approach to sleep deprivation. There will be board certified sleep doctors, behavior analysts and licensed psychotherapists and counselors to talk about the issues of sleep deprivation and how one can overcome it. The event will take place on April 27th at Akbar Restaurant in Edison, New Jersey. And that's a wrap on Measure of Asia tonight. Send us your suggestions and community news that you would like us to cover for our print and television coverage at events at itvgold.com. Follow us on our Facebook handle at ITV Gold. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and pick up a free copy of Desi Talk if you are in the tri-state or in the Chicago area for news on community entertainment and events in US and India. You can also read the News India Times newspaper online at www.newsindiatimes.com or subscribe to the hard copy by calling 212-675-7515. And this is Pia Jyoti Katru saying goodbye.